Friday Night Baseball on Spectrum Sportsnet LA, brought to you by Jack in the Box. And welcome to Denver, Colorado, Coors Field, Game 2 of the 2021 season as the Dodgers and Rockies get together again. Hope your weekend's off to a great start. Joe Davis and Orr Hershiser. Dodgers on opening day did not play particularly well, but the beauty of baseball is that there is always another game. Tomorrow comes very quickly. They're definitely going to win some games this year, and they're going to probably <laughs> win north of 100. So hit a little better with runners in scoring position. Continue the on-base percentage from last night was over 500. Yep. Just trying to cash in once they get the guys on. Pitching tonight, it'll be Trevor Bauer, the reigning Cy Young Award winner in the National League, making his Dodger debut. Well, last year, the acquired Mookie Betts. The best position player available. Well, Trevor Bauer, the best free agent pitcher available. So this is fantastic to have him make his Dodger debut. A little bit of a challenge in Coors Field. But you know what? You come out of spring training where it's experimentation and drills, pitching with one eye open, trying to face your old teammates and let them know what's coming. And you still can get people out and you still look dominant. You still look like you could win back-to-back -back Cy Youngs like the Dodgers are trying to win back-to-back -back World Series. And you look like you might be pretty fun to watch over the course <laughs> of a full season. For more on Trevor Bauer, here's Kirsten Watson. Yesterday, Trevor shared what all goes into his routine before his start. Of course, you know, a few days before the start, he'll throw his bullpen, play catch the here and there. But what really stood out to me was the day before, he will watch the hitters and he's reading their body language. He's reading how they're going up against the sequencing and how they're reacting to it. Very well prepared, Trevor Bauer, to try to put that to use in his first start in a Dodger uniform. What a weird day one it was. We'll recap it. And get going with day two as the Dodgers look for their first win of the year. World champion Dodger baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by Jack in the Box. The triple bonus Jack combo is back at Jack in the Box. Try it today for just $5.99. It's the Dodgers and the Rockies game two on another beautiful night at Coors Field in Denver as the Dodgers try to even this series up at a game apiece and try to get their first win of 2021. Joe Davis or Hershiser, Kirsten Watson. And the Dodgers getting ready to bat against Antonio Sensatella. Of course, at the top of the lineup will be Mookie Betts, who had a couple of hits in his debut yesterday. Second season with the Dodgers, 16 home runs year one. Led the majors in wins above replacement. He's the MVP runner-up. He was great in the postseason. And he will lead things off for Dave Roberts tonight with Corey Seager hitting second and starting it short. Justin Turner is the three-hitter in third baseman. Then Bellinger in center. Max Muncy hits fifth, starts at first. First start of the year for Will Smith. He does the catching. A.J. Pollock also makes his first start. He's in left field. Second baseman Gavin Lux. Couple of hits yesterday. It's eight tonight. And Trevor Bauer is the pitcher hitting nine. Mookie Betts at the top of the order with the way this offense functioned yesterday. They could really get on. Now they've got to figure out a way to just drive a few more in. Runners in scoring position was a key as far as one of the things that the reasons they they lost yesterday trying to get in that win column Joe yeah, they had 15 hits they had eight walks but they went three for 16 with runners in scoring position and fell eight five Only the second opening day game they've lost over the last 11 years How about for game two or all your keys to the game brought to you by your Southern California Lexus dealers well, these guys continue to come at it but they've got to bounce back from yesterday and it's really more of a mental bounce back the memorable debut you hope Trevor Bauer can really be on his game and show the way he showed in Cincinnati and won that Cy Young last year and what we just mentioned runners in scoring position they just were 188 last year this is a team that was only behind the San Diego Padres last year with hitting with runners in scoring position at 291. 
And they were so good. You mentioned bounce back. They were 13 and four last year following a loss. Yeah, trying to respond to their first one of this year. Here is Antonio Senzatella, 26 year old out of Valencia, Venezuela, who had a really good year last year. Those numbers you see, pretty much all of them were the best on the Rockies following what was a disaster of a 2019. He went oral from a 670 ERA in 2019 to that 344 last year. Uh, really uh, got the contact to be on the ground. He's not going to strike a lot of guys out. And then when the ball was hit in the air last year, it wasn't a home run as often. So cut down in his home run rate. But the Dodgers are going to see a lot of spin, like we said going into yesterday against Marquez. They're going to see his slider. It was only hit at a clip of 165 last year. Dodgers owned the slider yesterday. They're going to have to try and own it again here tonight. You touched on it a little bit, but his profile is this the lowest strikeout rate in the National League. But he does a couple things you've got to do if you're going to pitch at Coors Field. He doesn't walk people, the fifth best walk rate in the National League. And when there is contact, it's on the ground, the fourth highest ground ball rate in the National League. Good movement. The slider differential as far as the speed and getting ground balls with that it's about seven eight miles an hour so the, the firm slider from pitchers is usually about five to six miles an hour his is a little slower like Trevor Bauer so you're going to see some sweeping sliders a little bit more that break bigger compared to this the short tighter ones that more resemble the cutter native of Venezuela debuted when he was 22 years old 2017 they've admitted probably before he was ready he had only started seven games above the double-a level at that point he came up and has kind of learned on the job now getting ready for his fifth big league season and we'll face Mookie Betts to get this thing going you know we were pumped for opening day but I'm pumped let's get the first win let's go and I'm sure the lineup feels that same way and I'm sure Trevor Bauer feels that same way the grind of 162 it's both the most difficult thing about baseball and the greatest thing about baseball there's always another game your next chance never too far off Sensatella comes home and off we go with ball one the Betts had those two hits yesterday but we touched on all the issues with runners in scoring position he left seven men on including the bases loaded in the ninth inning. He's ahead here 2 and 0. Sanzatella pumped up a little bit. His average fastball last year was a tick over 94 miles an hour. The first two at 96. You know the other thing with him, he's a really quick worker. Games with Sanzatella have to tend to have a nice snappy pace to it. That is ripped to third and caught by Fuentes. How many times is he going to impersonate Nolan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yesterday, the double play at the bag on Justin Turner that shut down a rally. There, a, a line drive snag. For the first out of the night, here's Corey Seeger, who reached in four of his five plate appearances yesterday. Really good start. Couple hits, couple walks. Facing a guy he's homered against twice. Good feet down there. In front of that play. One of the keys of good hands is getting those feet to get you in position. The Dodgers, of course, have seen a bunch of Antonio Sensatella through the years with this entire career coming to the division. And so there are a bunch of guys in this lineup with numbers like Seeger where they've knocked up some home runs, even though Sensatella hasn't given many of them up the last year or two. There have been quite a few from Dodgers. Seeger in the right center field, but a base hit off the hands. They've got their first base runner with a game, a one out single from Seeger, who has now reached in five of his six plate appearances this year. Not hit hard, but nice exit angle to it. You think about if you miss hit that, it's kind of a pop up or a weak grounder, but that was on plane. A lot of room out there at Coors Field for those mishit singles to drop in. One on one out. Here's Justin Turner. He extended his on base streak back to last season with a one for four game on opening day. He's now reached in 33 consecutive regular season games. It's the longest active streak. And make it 34. Attacks the first pitch and singles to right.
Three balls in the air from a ground ball pitcher. Good sign for the Dodgers. When he has been low, it's been a ball. When he's brought the ball up into the strike zone, it's above the knee. The Dodgers able to get under two humpback liners and get a couple base runners. Well, this wasn't the issue yesterday, right? They had plenty of these. Can they cash in now that they have the opportunity? The hitter is Bellinger. Who singled into the first row of seats in opening day? It's ball one. What a wacky, in a lot of ways, a wacky opening day game, but no more crazier moment than that third inning home run turned into a single with the base running infraction. Bellinger passing Turner between first and second. The verdict coming out of the clubhouse was that nobody was really at fault. Bellinger probably could have done a little better job signaling Turner. Turner could have waited a little longer, but just one of those things. What are you going to do? Well, you like it in game one and not in game like 158, and you really need the game. Bellinger with a bullet. Diving play by Trevor Story. That's a couple hot shots that have turned into outs in this first inning. A line out from Betts to third. A line out from Bellinger to Story right here. And what a play this is. Shielded by Senzatella, but still able to pick it up as it cleared his glove and goes into Story's glove. Very nice play. And good job by both base runners freezing on the line drive. So it's up to Muncie with two out. And another guy who's got a home run against Senzatella. A game last year at Dodger Stadium against Antonio Senzatella where they hit four home runs. It's the most home runs he's ever allowed in a game. Then he faced him twice in September and shut him down. Muncie yanks a base hit into center field. It'll drive home Corey Seager for the first run of the day. Two out RBI single Max Muncy. The Dodgers lead it one nothing. First pitch attacking. First inning attacking. Every ball hit by a Dodger hitter so far in the air. And this might be the hardest line drive that ends up being a hit. The two other hard line drives were outs and the humpback liners. Were hits. Here they come. Runners in scoring position. A little better than yesterday already. Hey, you know, there's so much talk right now about uh, tempo of the game, pace of play, balls in play, throwing strikes, and how we need more of all those things. This is how the game should be played. This is how the game should feel. It's foul from Will Smith in strike one. You go over scouting reports and you come up with a plan as an individual and as a team. I think the team concept here is hit the ball when it's a strike and when it's up. I don't care if it's the first pitch or the last pitch. Eight of the 12 pitches have been strikes and they've swung at all eight of those strikes. That's down and away ball one on Smith. I didn't just have a rhythm to it. Yeah. Chris because you're right with Sensatella I think is even a bigger part of it too. the game plus the pacing of the pitcher. I mean he's getting to the next signal next pitch within about you know under 15 seconds. One and two on Smith. First start of the year for Smith. Barnes caught Kershaw on opening day. Barnes is okay, by the way. Slices his hand open on that play at the plate, but Dave Roberts expects him to be back in there tomorrow. Smith with a line drive. That's another base hit, and it's 2 0 Dodgers. Spraying line drives all over the place in this first inning. Laser show, Bulldog. Yeah, we're talking about no balls hit on the ground, but no real fly balls either. These are like humpback liners or solid line drives like this one off the bat of Will Smith. 
It's a competition right now to see who can hit it the hardest on the line. The two outs in this inning, both blurs, line drives, play at third by Fuentes, play at short by Story. The other four hitters have single. Four for six on your scorecard, but six for six as far as line drives are concerned. And now A.J. Pollock, who has the best numbers of the bunch against Senzatella. 438 with a home run and three doubles. Senzatella has pitched this inning like he's trying to save the slider for the second time around in the order. And he's paying for it. They're hitting the fastball when it's thigh high. And like he's got like a 615 dinner reservation. Strike one on Pollock. Season debut for AJ. Chris Taylor started in left field yesterday. He could make that reservation if he keeps giving up line drives. <laughs> That's true. The for game will still be going on. <laughs> he can make the reservation. Go to a place with the TV. Game will still be going. 16 pitches, only four sliders. We were talking about saving that. All four hits on the fastball. Another strike and another swing into center field. Owings will track it down and end the inning. But the Dodgers bang line drive after line drive and score twice to give Trevor Bauer a 2 0 lead to take the mound with in his Dodger debut on the other side of this break. Lead it off again for Bud Black. Then Josh Fuentes hitting second, starting at third. Shortstop is Trevor's story. Charlie Blackman, C.J. Crone, and Ryan McMahon through the heart of the lineup. First start for McMahon. Same for Dom Nunez, who does the catching, and Senzatella out of the ninth spot. Last year's Cy Young Award winner in Cincinnati. 30 years old now, out of Santa Clarita, California. Trevor Bauer making his Dodger debut. Fastball, slider, cutter, curveball, and change. A couple of those pitches are elite, especially the fastball and the slider. Large differential in the miles per hour between his fastball and his sliders. Um, 12, 13 miles an hour at times, and that tells you that it's more of an off speed pitch for him than just a power slider. Both those pitches, you mentioned them being elite, both ranked as the number one pitch of that category in the National League last year. His first pitch is a Dodger, takes off at 92, ball one on top of you. A 1 7 3 ERA for Bauer, winning the Cy Young for the Reds last year. Led the National League in ERA, led the National League in batting average against. Opponents hit just 159 against him. And of course, there were critics out there that said, yeah, great season, but short season and against a bad division. But Trevor said, look, I know how hard I work. I know how much knowledge I've gained through the years, how far I've come. So if I have something to prove, it's to myself, always. So he tries to tune out that noise. You know, folks that point to the short season and the circumstances and try to take anything away from that Zion. Tapia hits one in the air to left center field. Cody Bellinger back with room. Shy of the track, one gone. Well, you're going to see that a lot against Trevor Bauer. He is not a ground ball pitcher. And so for him to put up the stats he did last year winning the Cy Young in Cincinnati at the Great American Ballpark, it tells you that he gets a lot of weak flying balls staying away from the home run. And that's about the only way you score off of Trevor Bauer is the home run. Kind of like Kershaw, you can't string hits against him. Yeah, we said the 159 average. Not a whole lot of rallies. Coming against this guy. Faces off with Josh Fuentes in a 2 0 game. Starts him with a fastball strike. So, Cy Young Award last year, 2019, was not good. He had an ERA around four and a half, but he pitched much of that season with torn ligaments in his ankle. The year before that was the breakout season, 2018. He had a 221 ERA, second in the American League. And might just have won the Cy Young that year had he not gotten injured in August, taking a line drive off his leg, missed the final month and a half. But Snell went on to win it. Pitching for the club he grew up watching. 0 2. His 
Chad Warren used to bring him to a couple games a year at Dodger Stadium and then sit out in the left field pavilion. Have the headphones on. Listen to Devin Scully. Slider gets a chase. Two out. And his first strikeout in the Dodger uniform. He will have a lot of them, and a lot of them will be on a pitch like this. This sweeper at 82. Fastball's been around 92 to 96. So when you talk slider, you're talking about a bigger breaking slider. And think about that pitch at sea level. That's in Colorado. That's wicked. Average about 18 inches of break last year. That's more horizontal movement than any other starter's slider in the majors. Two up, two down. Trevor Story cuts it in there. Strike one. A little bit tighter version of that slider. Yep. Slider and cutter, and you'll probably just be able to tell by a little bit from the velocity, a little bit tick up from the slider, and of course a shorter break. His 01 is the slider. Which like you touched that doesn't seem to be bothered by uh, the altitude. The thing is sweeping. One one pitch to the all star story. Bottom falls out curve. I would think it's 79 and with the way that ball stayed on the plate and went more down that that was the curve ball. Sliders the new one curve ball he's been throwing since he was a kid just a minor grip change early on in his pro career. A lot of weapons here to go to in a one two count. Does he want to show something for later in the game when it might be a little bit more on the line going fastball up and in on one two missed his spot diving stop Gavin Lux what a play that's the best defensive play of his young big league career and that's a smile you're going to see more and more of as he gains more and more experience. Bottom of the first inning leads off the second. Here's our All State good hands play. Not going to come up with a better one, so we're just pull the trigger on this right now. No, I don't think we're going to come up with a better one. Maybe for a little while, and especially from Gavin Lux. Did a nice job getting rid of that in a hurry. He takes low ball one from Sensatella for more on Lux. Here's Kirsten. Earlier today, Gavin Lux was asked about, you know, when you get a big defensive play early in the game, what does that mean? And he said, it takes away the nerves, especially on the defensive side. And the rest of the game, you can just play. So the earlier you can get a play like that out, the better. Yeah, that's something that has bothered him before in his pro career. And some issues throwing. And just the, the bigger picture idea of playing free and not overthinking. Where they hope he makes his biggest growth this year. One catches a generous outside corner, one and two. We don't need that corner to be as generous as it was against Edwin Rios yesterday. Ball was a Dodger dog outside. <laughs> Not a foot long, no. just a normal size. No. Side two and two. They chart these things. And right. The strike three called on Edwin Rios in the ninth inning yesterday was the single worst miss by a plate umpire all day. So he got that going for him. <laughs> <laughs> they send ribbons to the umpire that. Said, no, they, that's no, awesome. They don't. Full count. Take the hook out of my mouth. <laughs> I'd send them glasses. <laughs> a trophy with, <laughs> with some glasses, really. Thick. Or just actual real glasses. Maybe try these out. Full count pitch. Ground ball, straight away, short story. Lux is out number one. As good as he is pitching, as much as he loves the craft of pitching, Trevor Bauer. Hates to hit. And he always has. Even back in the Little League, where most of these guys are the best hitters in their Little League, the best hitters at their high school, it was never Trevor. He was a pitcher. He was a glove first shortstop that, as a kid, just didn't want to be up there hitting. 
four for 43 in his big league career. And so he saw the news that the DH was going away and said, oh, are you kidding me? But he has elite patience. It's a <laughs> two Chances that he swings here. Ten percent max. Ooh. Well, he got it. He got a pitch he could handle. He just didn't handle it. No, no. Right. <laughs> Pretty much, Dodgers have done nothing but swing at strikes. The first eight hitters were making contact. He's at least following the game plan. Take balls, swing and strikes. And he's worked the count four. See, you got two and swing and misses at balls that you should handle. You pretty much should just take this pitch 100%. Just put it on the pitcher and the umpire. Here it comes. Swings and misses. Would have been called strike three. First strike out of the game for Sensatella. Two gone in the second. See if Mookie follows the tradition of a pitcher making an out and taking the first pitch to give him a little time when he gets back to the bench to get the batting gloves off, the bat away, the helmet down, and then kind of regroup mentally and get a glass of water, towel off. And if there's anybody that has a large regiment when they get back to the bench, it'd be Trevor Power. <laughs> Good Mookie. Yeah, all right. You take a little extra time coming up from the on deck circle, too. So pro. Sensatella didn't make it a tough decision. Mookie's two for seven so far, but the hardest hit balls have been outs. That's another hard hit ball. Nobody's stopping this one. It bounds its way to the corner. Extra bases for Betts with two out. Tapia digs it out, and Mookie hangs on it second with a double. Three for seven very early here in 2021. Right there, Rip City down the line, a little hooking action to make sure it gets well into the corner. Just about the same batted ball as first inning. He just moved it over a little bit. And stopping that one, Fuentes. Like he says. To give Seeger a two out chance. Seeger, of course, after the first one and hits it foul. Singleton scored in the first inning and has reached five of his six plate appearances so far. A lot of people talking about Corey Seager being an MVP candidate this year. Good pitch there, one two. Might be the first pitch the Dodgers have chased. It's only the second swing and miss from the regular pitcher. I got Mookie wrong. He's three for eight, and three for seven. I'm gonna leave the math to you. <laughs> that was a tough one to be fair. Shush. shush. <laughs> <laughs> Same pitch. This time, Seeger takes it. The Dodgers yesterday had three hits with runners in scoring position all day. They got two in the first inning today. Seeger looking to match yesterday's total already. The one two. Hit in the air, deep right field, over Blackman, and off the warning track. 
Betts in to score. Seeger to second. Back to back doubles with two out, and it's 3 0. Corey saw a lot of sliders when Sensatella got ahead. He chased the one down and in under his swing, but this one was worse, so he learns the spin. It doesn't break as much and sits right there. Times it perfect and drives it from one corner in left field for Betts to the other corner in right field for Seeger. And it's another ball in the air against Sensatella, who again was top five in the league in ground ball percentage last year. They've hit just one ground ball. Now Turner. Bounces in there, 1-0. It was work for Sensatella in the first inning with 17 pitches, 12 strikes, and now the Dodgers have pushed his pitch count over double of that. Here's somebody who, with the, the low strikeout rate, the low walk rate, very efficient. He typically pitches deep into games. He's in there with that fastball, and it's one and one. He was top five in the league in innings pitch last year. Had the Rockies only complete game. Just had a game against the Astros where through eight shutout innings. You don't often see pitch counts run up like this against him. On a 1 1 pitch. Turner waits on a breaking ball, serves it into center. Here comes Owens, lays out and can't get it, and it gets by Blackman. Three consecutive two out extra base hits, and it's 4 0. Betts, Seeger, and Turner all with two out doubles. Not hit real hard. But up again, giving him a chance to put the ball in the air. And you know the average of the ball in the air is a lot higher than the one on the ground, especially from a ground ball pitcher. And these Dodgers continue to find holes with their weekly hit balls and find some holes with the hard hit ones too. Top three in the order, five for six in the first two innings. Bellinger, who's 0 for 1, but absolutely crushed a line drive that Trevor Story made a diving play in. Right in on him here. It'll be Trevor Story to make the call and the catch. Two innings and four two out runs for the Dodgers. As Trevor Bauer goes back to work, if Dodger pitchers strike out 10 tonight, Everybody gets a free Jumbo Jack tomorrow. Jack in the box with the purchase of a large drink. Valid at LA restaurants only. Blackman, Crone, and McMahon coming up against Bauer in the second after he won one, two, three in the first. Blackman, who is 0 for 3 with a walk on opening day. It's on the first one from Bauer and takes any high fastball strike one. Let's check in with Kirsten. Today, Trevor Bauer launched his season long give back initiative called K's for Cause to support local nonprofit organizations focused on STEM and or youth programming in the greater LA area. Bauer will donate $1,000 per strikeout throughout the regular season each month. Great play by Bellinger running one down in the gap for the first out of the second. What a warm welcome the Dodgers are giving to Trevor Bauer. Defense by Bellinger, defense by Lux. Four two out RBIs that they weren't getting many of yesterday. Welcome to the blue. Four up, four down. CJ Crone coming up. That's yeah, so a cool thing Trevor's doing with K's for a cause. And mm -hmm. uh, Kirsten mentioned STEM. That's science, technology, engineering, and math. That Trevor has interest in. And the first program, the first uh, beneficiary of this is going to be a program called Think Together. And Bauer's donations will help fund the organization's after school science and robotics programs for kids in Southeast Los Angeles. 
Trevor's from a long line of scientists. His grandpa was born in Germany, came to the U.S. as a kid, and was an early day computer programmer. Three balls, no strikes on Chrome. Trevor's dad has memories of Trevor's grandpa sitting at the kitchen table with these huge sheets of early forms of code. Trevor's dad worked in chemical engineering, and then Trevor was a mechanical engineering major at UCLA. That's a four pitch walk to Crone. Rockies have their first base run. And then he's applied his love for physics and science and math to his craft as a pitcher. He's kind of a pitching scientist. One on one out. Here's Ryan McMahon. Golf's the first one that he sees into center field. Out goes Lux. On comes Bellinger at the last moment makes the play. Looked like anybody was really sure that they wanted it. Bellinger, Betts, or even Lux going out. And at the last moment, Betts peeled off and Bellinger stabbed at it to grab it. Cody's got it. And then right at the end, the laugh and the chat with Mookie Betts is he started to lose it visually. But he knew he was the one that was calling it and captaining the play. Those are the top two selling jerseys in baseball right there. Betts and Bellinger. Two gone Chris Owens a slider to the corner for a strike it's 85 more the cutter. Owens is the star of the show for the Rockies yesterday going three for three with a triple as a surprise starter at second base starting in center today. Slider and curveball got to be hard for the hitters to recognize the spin and then realize which one is going to break a lot or a little. There's a little. Pitchers will do that with their curveball. The catcher will just put down one sign for a curveball, and the pitcher will decide this is what I'm going to make go down, this one I'm going to make sweep and make them chase, this one I'm going to make a little shorter and tighter to get a called strike. Bauer does it with three different pitches, and I'm sure he puts an exponential quotient on each one. Gets Owens to chase for strike three, his second K, and a couple scoreless innings to open Trevor Bauer's time in a Dodger uniform. Your favorite Dodger Stadium eats are available at home through Dodgers Home Plates. Now offering free delivery on all orders through Thursday the 8th. To order, search Dodgers Home Plates on Postmates app and enjoy a Dodger dog, garlic fries, and more from the comfort of your couch. Sounds good to me. Muncie leads off the third, takes ball one from Antonio Senzatella. Dodgers with four runs on seven hits. Two innings against Senzatella. In this series, they have 22 hits and 11 innings. Once he's got one of those hits today, drove in the Dodgers' first round with a two out single on the first. Driven in a run in both games so far. One and two.
Sharp ground ball, well positioned Fuentes, and the shift for the backhand gets Muncie. Five at four M dash three. Yeah. Right small. Third baseman up the middle at the second base position. Easy throw after you catch that hard. Ground ball. One away third inning. Here's Will Smith. His first inning RBI single against Sensatello was his first hit and nine at bats against him. One ball, one strike. Dodgers doing a good job laying off the slider that's down, but when it's been a strike, they've done a nice job against it again, like they did last night. Three for four off the slider from Sensatel so far tonight. Took one there, one and two. Might have been just a bit outside, but Will Smith is a very good judge of the strike zone. He's in the dirt, the count evens up. Wonderful weather in Denver for the season opening series. Wonderful having the buzz of the crowd back. 21,000 of Coors Field. What a take. Fastball just above the belt. My first year in Cleveland in 1995, our opening day got snowed out. That's what we were kind of thinking about when the Dodgers were opening in Colorado. Stumbles out of the box as he chops it to Story. Two up and two down. What a bummer, huh? I mean, you get you wait all season for baseball and then hope it gets snowed out. So my kids grew up in Florida at that time, and they commuted up for opening day, and we rented a home in a neighborhood in Cleveland. And the snow came and we got snowed out. I took the kids directly from opening day to the sporting goods store and we bought snowmobile suits and we rallied up all the neighborhood kids and we played baseball in the front yard. I shoveled awesome. a baseball diamond and the lady across the street who I hadn't met yet said, I don't know who the new people across the street are, but they must not be from here. They're playing baseball in the <laughs> snow. One ball, no strikes on Pollock. <laughs> You're going to say you went to the supporting goods store and bought snowmobiles. <laughs> wow. That's no. a heck of a, but heck of a it, snow out. My kids got to know the neighborhood kids right away. It was yeah. great for the summer. We had a great time. Those kids all go home and tell their family who's living in that house. So it was great for my wife and kids for the whole summer. The 1 1 pitch. One and two. You obviously pitched the, the kids' game. Dropping oh, yeah. Dropping two seams in on them. <laughs> oh, for sure. I breaking was, bats. Oh, I love pitching in cold weather. I was hurting their hands. <laughs> How'd that one feel, kid? Yeah, and then I throw the breaking ball. They hit it off the end of the bat. Right. Bees all everywhere. Right. Or just diving. Kids in running bed. home and crying, crying to their mom. Crying. <laughs> You're pumping your fist. Mr. Hershiser, uh, jam me. <laughs> <laughs> Strike three call on Pollock. To end the third. First time this year, Dodgers have gone down in order, by the way. And the game presented by Pacifico is Jasmine from Riverside, who's reporting from a hospital in LA. Appreciate all you do, Jasmine. Go Dodgers. Jasmine's Dodgers have a 4 0 lead as we move to the bottom of the third. Joe Davis or Hershiser, Kirsten Watson. Dodgers looking for their first win of 2021 after the 8 5 loss last night. Or yesterday. It was kind of became last night. Is that one slogged on? Dom Nunez to lead this inning off against Bauer, who's not given up a hit in his first couple innings. A couple K's, one walk. Nunez pulls it on a couple bounces to Gavin Lux, and one pitch, one out. 
very small sample size but the actions of Gavin Lux at second base are giving me an awful lot of confidence that he's much more at home now in the big leagues. You're getting confidence because he looks like he has so much confidence. Exactly. Just attacking balls throwing to first with confidence. Sends a teller. Right down the pipe strike one. We saw it in spring. We've seen it on a, a play already today. But that smile that comes from him, the outward joy that he plays with when he is confident and having fun. What comes first, the chicken or the egg, right? And Zach McGavin seems like a little bit of success comes first. And then the fun. The smile and the personality. Spoils that one. We'll do the 0-2 again. This is where you want to keep your pitch count down. Put the pitcher away as soon as possible. One two pitch. Struck him out with a fastball that splits the plate. Third one for Bauer, two away in the third. Second time through the lineup as Ramel Tapia comes up. Fly to center his first time. Ramel one for six so far this year. Fastball cut on a miss, strike one. Number one spin rate fastball in baseball a year ago, which was best used right up there to get that result. And a cutter to the corner, and it's 0 2. With his movement and velocity, if he gets the edges of the plate, Extra hard on the hitters. Here he comes. I would think that one would get charted as a curveball. Downward movement again. Downward 81 and the target that Will Smith gave. The computers agree with you. Get the thumbs up from Rick right. Very nice. Rick Adrusky's not the computer. He just, yeah. Computer agreed with Rick. Rick agreed with you. And I'd say that was back to back with the curveball. Trevor Bauer can maintain his stuff not as good as anybody. First time through the order, no hits. Last year they only hit 141 off of him first time through. And that hovers under 200 for all three times through the batting order. 156 second time through, so that's maintaining your stuff. And you get to the third time around the order, it only is up to. 184 there. Very nice. Brings another one two to Tapia and strikes him out with a cutter. And they exchange a stare. Tapia. Staring back at Bauer, who returns it in his direction and then steps off of the field with a 1 2 3 third. Second. April 2nd was Don Sutton's birthday, 1945, born in southeast Alabama. Passed away this winter, January 18th, at the age of 75. The only homegrown LA Dodger Hall of Famer. Signed in 1964 after the team had relocated. Debuted two years later in a rotation that had Koufax and Drysdale, Claude Osteen. Kevin Lux leads off this inning, takes ball one from Sensatella, and still in many categories, Don Sutton, the Hall of Famer, the all time leader in Dodger history.
Don was always kind to me. We had a nice relationship, played a lot of golf together, and learned a lot about pitching from him and the big leagues, too. Don started pitching when he was in sixth grade. He had a teacher when he was a sixth grader that was an old minor leaguer named Henry Roper. Lux pulls it off the end of the bat to first. Crone feeding sends a Tella who is late to the bag and Lux beats it out. Just kind of took his time getting over there and Lux was bolting down the line. You get an extra step from the left side and you get an extra step because you're fast. And Senzatella got his feet tangled a little bit about which one is he going to touch the bag with anticipating it's going to be bang bang and he didn't want to collide wants to do it with his right foot and in doing that lost a half a step and that's what cost him. Good call there by Pat Holbert. We're always quick to point out when umpires miss a call but that is bang bang that he nails. In real time there. Power up there to bunt stabs to the first one strike one just to finish off that thought on Don starting as a pitcher in sixth grade he's got the old minor leaguer as a teacher and Mr. Roper would bring his glove to school every day and Don would do the same and they'd play catch taught him how to pitch. But it foul and it's 0 and 2. Clayton Kershaw trying to track down Sutton in a couple different categories. Still the all time leader in strikeouts. 22 seasons without missing a start for injury. 16 of those 22 came in that uniform. Roger Blue. If they were evaluating spin rate back then, he could really spin a fastball and spin a breaking ball. Bauer able to lay it down with two strikes. Might hate hitting, but Dodgers will love it if he can do that when they ask him to. Lux into scoring position. Out so valuable in Coors Field. Maybe have a shot at Gavin Lux at second base, but after watching him beat Senzatel to the bag at first, even though this is a short bunt, they decide to go to first to get that out. Trevor Bauer with a little small rush up might have helped a little bit too where the decision was to throw that ball. Runner in scoring position for Mookie Betts. Lined out and doubled down the line. Look out, ball one. A good secondary lead down there from Lux drew some attention from Don Nunez. Oral day after they went three for 16 with runners in scoring position four for seven. Hard to keep this lineup down no matter what the situation I think it was just an anomaly that the way it worked out yesterday. Dave Roberts even said after the game there's not a whole lot you can say you, you shouldn't play very well in any facet but then he was quick to point out we don't typically have too many games that look like that over the course of the year. Get one of them out of their system right away. Last half full. <laughs> On 2 0. It's fouls off a of center cut fastball. Like that one back, 2 and 1. He's saying it hit him. Home plate umpire Chris Conroy saying foul ball. Mookie's saying check it, check it. Mookie's so confident he's already taken his shin guard off. It definitely hit him in the forearm. And they did not call a swing on the check swing. So it's a ball and a hit by a batter. Hit by pitch. And he's already he's, over there. It is officially under review, but. He's that confident in the outcome of this. I 
going right along with them and I'm putting HBP in pen. Ooh, power move. <laughs> All that mechanical pencil <laughs> stuff <laughs> up in here. It's going to wind up being the right call more ways than one. Right call on that it was not a swing. Right call from Mookie's standpoint that it hit him. The right call to challenge it and get it right. A little bit of a laugh from us and from Mookie, but it was inches away from being dangerous. Yeah, that was my first reaction. Yeah. So they do grant him first base. And a couple of ducks on the pond for Corey Seeger. Pace of play, you make it where players just stand where you think the replay is going to come in. <laughs> Single and a double for Seeger today. He's reached base in six of his seven plate appearances so far this year. Well, we know he didn't turn it on as soon as the season started. We saw this all spring. Yeah, just continuation, really continuation from last year. Not close, 2 0. Oh. Throws him a strike here. Corey's going to be very aggressive. Not often you find Corey Seager with a 2 0 count. Nope. Righty on deck. He still might be trying to trick him right here. That's why they're having trouble getting to a sign. With Justin Turner on deck, you kind of look around. I've already given up four runs. These are huge runs. I've got a very hot hitter at the plate, and I got a 2 0 count, but I got a right hander on deck. And the dirt kicks away from Nunez and both runners advance. Definitely did not want to throw him a strike and if it was he was trying to trick him for sure. I think he went to a change up right there. A little slider but not a lot of heart in it to throw it over the plate. You might not throw him one here either. Yoli Shasin is back with the Rockies. Literally as of like 48 hours ago he showed up and surprised everybody and uh, Rocky signed him less than 24 hours before rosters were due for opening day. Four pitch walk and they're loaded for Turner. Time for the Land Rover performance spotlight as Turner comes up already two for two today. Singleton scored in the first, doubled homer run in the second. Justin is so consistent, and it's not always because he hits the ball hard, but he has a knack for being able to slice the ball to right field and pick up a lot of hits. Top three in the order have reached in eight of their nine plate appearances thus far. Seven of the eight, beg your pardon. Ooh, a little bit low. Ball one. Sensatella. Oh, he's saying. After a four pitch walk, thought he had gotten strike one. Pitching around Seeger brings Turner and then Bellinger into the equation. There's a strike one on one. And this is what you talk about. It's just as a pitcher to try and go through this lineup. Exhausting. Mm -hmm. Physically and mentally. Base hit right field for Turner, who is three for three. Lux and Betts both in to score. The Dodgers lead six nothing.
three for three with three RBIs already for Turner. We talked about Justin when we did a little vignette on him, how he can kind of slice the ball over to right field. Well, this one he carves over there, beats the defense, gets the RBIs, continues to keep the line moving, and now sends a teller who pitched around a lefty to get to a righty, even in more trouble with two real good left handed hitters coming up. He's such a constant presence in the late innings in his starts last year, but in his 21 21 debut, he's chased with one gone in the fourth. World champion Dodger baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by the SoCal BMW centers BMW the ultimate driving machine. Dodgers have a six nothing lead they've chased Antonio Senzatello from the game the guy that was the best pitcher for the Rockies last season. Can't get through four so he hands it off to a veteran a. Guy the Dodgers have seen a bunch of through the years Yoli Shasin. Who still is one of the great Rockies of all time statistically as a pitcher? Debuted in 2009 with Colorado, was there through 2014. He has bounced all over the place since then, but signed a contract with the Rockies just hours before opening day. And now here he is, thrown right into the fire to face Bellinger. First and third, one gone. Seen now 33 years of age. Bellinger swings at the first pitch, roller to second. 4 6 almost, but Bellinger beats it out. And Seeger comes in. So they lead it 7 0 as Bellinger legs that one out. Fielder's choice RBI, the wheels from the left side from the center fielder. Get him the ribeye steak. Bellinger at first, two away, and here is Max Muncy. Dodgers leading 7 0, out hitting the Rockies 9 0. If I told you all that they would have, see at this point, 24 hits over the first game plus at Coors Field, how many home runs would you have given them? 24 hits. Five. Right? Zero. Right. One one from Chassin. Once he takes a back foot breaker and it's two and one. Chassin only a handful of games pitched last couple of years. Pitched in two games last year for the Braves. 2019 the split between Milwaukee and Boston. 2018 he was the ace for that Brewers team that pushed the Dodgers to Game Seven in the NLCS. He fires a two one. He hits it foul. Seen out of Venezuela. Really good years in Colorado early on in his career. Still is number two in pitchers' war in Rockies history, although a lot of the young guys that are on the staff now are already. Nipping at his heels there. Once he upset with himself as he flies it weakly to Tapia and left. Dances back and puts it away. But the Dodgers add three. Even by a touchdown and an extra point as we go to the bottom of the fourth.
World champion Dodger baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by Carl's Jr. Feed your happy at Carl's Jr. with the big Carl or the really big Carl. Dodgers seven, Rockies nothing, out hitting them nine nothing as we go to the bottom of the fourth. Joe Orl and Kirsten back at Coors Field. Bauer has got to be liking this. This whole uh, pitching for the Dodgers thing. He's fired up their three scoreless innings and got plenty of support, something that was hard to come by in Cincinnati last year. Two, three, and four. Josh Fuentes, strike one. How about the uh, the wild card round for Trevor Bauer against Atlanta? He struck out 12 over seven and two thirds shutout innings, but the Reds got beat one nothing in 13. It was kind of the story all year for him. Backs up Turner, triggers quickly and gets him. Justin Turner. These bounce throws are becoming a little bit routine for a few different infielders. We've seen really Lux use it, Turner's used it, Seeger will use it. Quick release and get it over there online. You know what they've all had in common is Max Muncy looking really smooth at first take of the throws. A lot of reps over there for him in spring training. Didn't have to divide his time between two or three positions. Here's story. Was robbed by one of those bounce throws his first time up. Diving play by Gavin Lux. And Lux bounced throw over the first on the move to get story. Two balls, no strikes. Balls one strike. When you command more than one pitch, Trevor Bauer has shown that he'll throw his cutter at any time, his slider, and his curveball. You have a little bit more room for error with your fastball. And I would say command-wise, the fastball has been the weakest of his pitches because he's either been able to throw it for a strike, but more of a cookie or a ball, kind of a scud. That's perfect there with the cutter. That is perfect. And so he gets a little bit bigger spray pattern and gets away with his misses with the fastball for a strike tonight so far. Because those breaking pitches have been so accurate. Here he comes with the 2 2 to Trevor Story. Did he go? No swing, full count. You can see though, you know, he dotted the corner on the pitch before this one, and then when he goes back to that one, that is just just off the corner. Perfectly located breaking ball. Heater in, Joe. On 3 2 to story. Left it right over the heart of the plate, though. But because of the two breaking balls, he's got a little bit more room. There's a little indecision in Story's mind that I just can't commit to a 3 2 fastball because this guy will throw me anything. Misses his target, but still has a ball in his hand and Story up there. That last fastball, even though the reality was it was a mistake in the middle, it sets up perfect for a slider. Start the slider right where the fastball was. Cutter, same idea. Stays three and two. That's that tunneling effect that we talk about all the time. Make it look like something else, and then have it do something else. It's something Trevor's been paying attention to and trying to maximize for a really long time before it was popular. Well, he tunneled it with the cutter. Now he can tunnel it with the slider. Make it even a little bigger if he wants. It's exactly what he does to strike out Story. The fifth for Bauer. Two gone in the fourth. 
Great sequence of pitching. Finds his way back into the count. Once he gets there, he dots it on the corner. Then he walks him off with a great check swing from a top hitter in the league. Misses with a fastball, but gets it for a foul ball. Throws a cutter and gets another foul ball, but then tunnels his way right to the slider and the strikeout. And now Charlie Blackman. And guess what? The strikeout number five. Halfway to a free Jumbo Jack. Really big one. Uh, Jumbo Jack and Jack in the box with the purchase of a large rank valid only at LA area restaurants. I like it. Yep. Need 10 of them. Oh, one to Blackman. Cutter is in. No swing. One and one. Only one base runner against Trevor Bauer through three and two thirds. It was a walk for C.J. Crone in the second. Here he comes to Blackman. He hits a ground ball to second for Gavin Lux. A one, two, three, fourth for Trevor Bauer, who is cruising in his Dodger debut. Dodgers in this one so far after dropping game one eight five they lead seven nothing. Trevor Bauer has been fun to watch five K's one walk no hits one stare down. A lot of fun through four innings to the fifth we go Will Smith the lead off against Yoli Shasin. Game two kind of has a reputation for being like the uh, game of the year, right? Because you have just all the pomp and circumstance around opening day, and then game two is like the reminder okay, let's settle in for the grind. But I think because game one for the Dodgers was such a flat tire, changes the perspective on game two a little bit. It's like, let's try again to have a really fun baseball game. 2 0 pitch. Strike one on Smith. I was pumped coming into today. It's like, you know, let's get the first win. Let's see the offense function the way it did a little better with runners in scoring position, but keep the hits coming and the walks. And you know, the other thing about game two, you're in Coors Field. <laughs> yeah. You got to anticipate something exciting is going to happen. Toes, yeah. huh? <laughs> and Trevor Bauer wasn't a it's pretty good billboard. Yeah. Full count. Gonna have billboards most nights. The starting staff. Something yeah. to look forward to most nights. A fun time to follow this team. Smith opening the fifth. We'll do the three two again. Mentioned to yesterday, but it's the first time in baseball history that the team has had three MVPs and three Cy Young Award winners on the same team. It's one of the second time that a team has won a World Series and then gone into the offseason and acquired the reigning Cy Young Award winner. First Dodger ever to do it. Yeah, I mean, the second time in baseball, baseball history. history, right? So yeah. The only other Who's time. Who's going? Clemens? Yeah. Won back to back Cy Young's in Toronto, and then the Yankees picked him up after winning in 98. Won with Clemens in 99 and in 2000. Yeah. I like that pattern. Yeah. Eighth pitch. Will Smith, it's a high drive to right center field, peeling away from Owings off the wall. Extra bases to open the fifth for Smith. Another double. Dodgers still without a home run. I know it's early, but they're in cores and they're racking up the hits. 26 hits in 13 plus innings. AJ Pollock 0 for 2, line to center and struck out. Uh, 
A word from Fix Auto Collision Centers. Supporting your community means supporting local businesses. Fix Auto Collision Centers are proud to be locally owned and operated. Inside corner, strike two. A.J. Pollock coming off his best offensive season. Third in the league in home runs last year with 16. It's a 43 home run pace over a normal season, which would have been more than double his career high. 21 homers in 18. That's the most. 0 2 pitch. Taken down and in, 1 and 2. Big thing for AJ was that he stayed healthy. He had the elbow infection and surgery in 2019. Missed 60 games for that. Missed 50 games each of his last two years in Arizona. Elbow and then groin. But you look at his two fully healthy seasons now. Last year, 2015, he was an all star in 15, and he found himself on multiple leaderboards in 2020. Not going to wow you, but when he's on the field, typically as steady as they come. On another one two pitch, A.J. Pollock. Takes ball two. Two two pitch sharp ground ball right at Trevor's story one away download the MLB app to get in game video highlights live pitch by pitch breaking news player updates stats leaderboards and more for your Dodgers inspired me to open my app check the other scores in the league as Gavin Lux comes up. It's only uh, see seven games going on today. How's Blake Snell doing? His first start for the Padres. About to begin. All right. So he's still okay. <laughs> he's still perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Padres won game one of their season against Arizona yesterday. Diamondbacks had an inning where they hit four home runs and still lost. As far as they can research those things, that's never happened before yesterday. Giants will play game two against Seattle. Giants had a 5 0 lead. They gave up six runs in the eighth and wound up losing in 10. Ouch. A lot of one run games yesterday. Extra inning games with the runner starting on second base. One and two on Gavin Lux. Shasin using the change up here where Senzatella was trying to land the breaking ball. Shasin. Last couple pitches pulling the string. 7 nothing game. Dodgers in front. Top of the fifth inning. And with second with one out. And a 1 2. Soft on soft on soft right here. The last three pitches. A little bit of leak from Gavin Lux on a few of these swings where the front shoulder seems to be flying out a little bit.
Another one, two. Walks, yanks this one towards right center field. Blackman won't get there. It rolls all the way to the wall. Smith in to score easily. Lux is on his way to third with a triple. Standing up, and it's 8 nothing. Lux became a very good student again they went off speed for the fourth time in a row away and look at the front side stay in now look at the head stay down and out over the plate and he's got plenty of swing to hit this in the gap slides it by Charlie Blackman and once that happens there is a lot of acreage out there to have a three bagger or he can run more triples in this park sorry or than right. any other. Power takes a strike. So Lux is now four for seven in the two games. Trevor had a successful sacrifice last time. That ball one strikeout. Infield playing in for Bud Black in an 8 0 game with the man at third and one out. Ball two. We apologize for the little score panel that's not appearing on the right side of your screen. It's a little technical difficulties, but we'll keep up with it. Got to go into a radio mode a little bit, right? Yeah. Hey, a little TV inside for you at home. It's called a score bug. Yeah. That's right. Let's get the bug alive. It's like, oh, <laughs> bring it back to life. CPR on the bug. Two balls, two strikes. And Trevor Bauer, the man at third, one gone. That is down the middle in strike three, up number two. Fifth inning and already the fourth at bat. At least plate appearance for Mookie Betts. Lined out in the first, doubled in the second, and got hit by a pitch in the fourth. See if Mookie is taking to let Trevor Bauer have some time with that man in scoring position. He might be jumping on a strike though. He dies, it's foul. A completely different strategy than two out, nobody on, and last at bat where he. Waited a little bit for Trevor. Now trying to pick up that run. Runner at third is Lux after his RBI triple. One ball one strike on Betts now. To 26 hits for the Dodgers in these two games. Still looking for that first homer though. Team that hit about two of them per game last year. Yanked down the line. Foul. Who you got? Who you got hit in the first? Wow. Who oh I got hit in the first? I feel like it's a matter of time, obviously, but well, you, you know, you want to favor the top of the lineup because they probably are going to get the last at bat if there still isn't one. So you want to think about I'm gonna, I'll go Corey Seeger. Okay. Had enough of them in spring training, right? Yeah. <laughs> Was he tied for the Cactus League? Oh, Jack Peterson, uh, the Chicago Cubs. I'm going to go Mookie on this next pitch. <laughs> Check swing. Could it be? Not quite a homer. <laughs> and the inning is over. Dodgers get another and lead it eight nothing. Halfway home in Denver. World champion Dodger baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by your Southern California Toyota dealers. Find great ways to save on a bold new Camry at the We Make It Easy sales event. And by Mercury Insurance, low rates, big discounts, great insurance. Doc and Dino. Dodgers eight, Rockies nothing. As we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Bauer in his Dodger debut has struck out five, walked one, and 
Not allowed to hit yet. This is CJ Crone, who is a uh, man that earned that only walk. Takes a fastball high, 1 0. Two balls, no strikes. Power home with a 2 0. Found the corner there, 2 and 1. Third overall pick out of UCLA in 2011 of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Debuted one year later when he was still just 21. Firing a 2 1, getting a swing and a miss to even the count out. He's back and forth between the big leagues and AAA for really a couple of years. This is now his eighth year as a full time big leaguer. Five and a half years with the Indians, year and a half with the Reds. And the first of a three year contract that he signed with the Dodgers is 2 2. Crone hits softly to third, charging Turner. Wide throw. Crone is on his way to second. He'll stop there. Hopefully, going to be a throwing error on Turner. Breaking ball, roll over the top. Justin Turner, very routine play, sets his feet, throws it over there, and just gets underneath it. Out of Max Muncie, who has had some fine footwork throughout this series so far, but this one a little too far away. And two errors in yesterday's game. That's the first one here. Crone into scoring position with nobody out. Here's Ryan McMahon. But a high fly ball to center field his first time. Cutter for strike one. Has that been his best individual pitch tonight, his cutter? Yeah, I think, you know, depending because when the slider's wide, I think it's on purpose sure. a lot of times, so you're going to downgrade in your mind. But I think, yeah, all three of the breaking balls, but especially the top two, the cutter and the slider, have been very good. There it is again. He's putting that cutter right on the corner. The slider by design has been a chase pitch. Right. And but he's showing that with the cutter, he can live with it in the strike zone. So you can't get to your chase pitch unless you're proven with some spin. I can throw strikes with another one. So yeah, it's been a very good combination. Stretch in the 0-2. Got him. Three straight cutters to get McMahon. His sixth K. Now before that last pitch, there were five Ks. And we'll take a look at the stat cast powered by Google Cloud. Trevor Bauer has been on his game. And you can see the lower velocities in the chase area. Those are the sliders. The 86 is the cutters. He got one to chase on that and beat one hitter with a fastball at 95. And then the sixth one, three cutters in a row, as Joe described, and he hit that one perfectly on the inside corner. Chris Owens comes up. Four consecutive cutters now. That one fouled off. Owens struck out his first time after the three for three season debut yesterday. Manager Bud Black in his fifth year at the helm of the Rockies. Boy, he's riding it right now. He sure is. He's locked in on it. He's locked into the glove side half of the plate. And when he needs to, he can go to the glove side corner of the plate. You going slider off of those two cutters? You know what? He's doing such a good job. I'll let him call the pitches. <laughs> oh, two. 
Struck him out with the slider. Owens tipped his cap. Strikeout number seven for Trevor Bauer and two gone in the fifth. There are sliders that break a little bit like this, not quite as drastic. There's not a lot of them that are this accurate. But I think Trevor Bowers has a spin that's hard to recognize. I think when we get into the science of pitching and the spin access, I think he really focuses in on not only spinning it as good as he can, but getting it on the right axis. The eight hitter Dom Nunez. Started him with a cutter for a strike. A slider it is. He designed before his breakout 2018 season. Spent hours with his dad just discussing the physics of how to make it do what they wanted to before he even took it into the lab to try and design it. So they had a blueprint for it just through discussion. That's off the hands and foul. The whole goal was to get it to break as much horizontally without having it drop vertically at all outside of what gravity is going to do to it. And he used Corey Kluber and Mike Clevenger's as inspiration. Went into the lab and put all the theories and concepts him and his dad Warren had come up with to use until he came out with a pitch that he liked. Pitch design. Well, this inning he's pitching like an Indy car. It's all left turns. It's right to left, right to left, right to left. Here it comes again. Let's see if he sticks with it. Eight strikeouts for Trevor Bauer. Five innings and no hits against him and his first strut in Dodger Blue. Tonight's junior Dodger of the game is Alexis from Compton. Her favorite player is Justin Turner. Join junior Dodgers for a chance to be the junior Dodger of the game by going to Dodgers.com slash JR Dodgers. Who's in who's out brought to you by in and out. Yoli Shasin is finished and the left hander Ben Bowden comes in. These are good places to start your 2021 season a little bit up get used to the home uniform again and get it going Ben Bode is this is major league debut yeah so not just start his season but start his big league career 26 years old out of Lynn Massachusetts a second round pick out of Vanderbilt so one of the Vanderbilt products you don't hear nearly as much about Comes a college teammate of Walker Bueller's Injury riddle climb up through the minors, but it was dominant in 2019 in double A. Obviously, the shutdown happens last year. There was no minor league season. He was at the alternate site. But so makes the team out of camp and makes his major league debut here facing Corey Seeger, Justin Turner, and Cody Bellinger. Go get him, kid. Lineup's the hard part. At least the scoreboard at eight to nothing. He feels like he's out there just to get some work. The butterflies are definitely flying. That's high with a fastball. One ball, no strikes on Seeger, who through a game plus has an 875 on base percentage. It past the diving McMahon. I mean, my goodness. Somebody get a fan and cool the guy off. No. No, no, <laughs> don't. Actually, keep your fan to yourself. Three, two, let's see, three hits and a walk tonight. He scored each of the first three times he reached. Turner trying to stay perfect as well. A single, a double, and another single, and he's driven in three. Bowden pitches. Turner takes a strike. Top three in the order has reached 
nine of the 11 plate appearances combined. Junior for the big Carl and the really big Carl. Feed your happy. One on one out, Cody Bellinger. Drove in a run with a single his last time. He's one for three. That occurrence yesterday, Bellinger's home run getting wiped away with the base running. I don't even know what you call it. I don't want to call it a mistake. The base running ruling. Yep. First time in Dodger history that's happened where home runs been wiped away by that rule since 1930. Bellinger struck. Del Bissonette homered. Babe Herman was the Justin Turner on the play. Thought it was caught and. Retreated and it happened right at the same spot, midway between first and second base. Bissonette holds the distinction of being the all time home run hitter from players born in Maine. Wow. A tragic end to his career, though. He's a fantastic young player, but had a beach volleyball injury. Dazzy Vance landed on his ankle, severed his Achilles. Bellinger down swinging, went and had surgery, got blood poisoning from the surgery. Barely survived and was never the same as a player. A long career managing in the minors. My right, fastball gets Cody. See him swing under that. Pretty nice resume to strike out in your first big league inning. After Seeger started with a single, he's got Turner and Bellinger, and now Muncy stands in. Dion lefty. Ball one. See one for three. Drove in the first of the eight runs with a single in the first. They got two in the first, two in the second, three in the fourth, one in the fifth. Sliders in there, one on one. And the Rockies bring a pitcher up from the minors. It's like bringing somebody up to the big leagues in a half. It was a Coors Field. You really have to know that the guy is ready and mature enough to give up runs, but not give up. Muncy hits a high drive to deep center field. Hilliard drifting back on the track, puts it away. And ends the inning. The Dodgers have an 8 0 lead as we go to the bottom of the sixth. The Rockies still looking for their first hit against Trevor Bauer, who's been dazzling in his Dodger debut. World champion Dodger baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by Morongo Casino Resort and Spa, the newest, friendliest, and safest casino resort. Good times. And by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop NissanUSA.com. To the bottom of the six we go. Trevor Bauer, eight strikeouts, one walk, and no hits. 
Nine one and two coming up against him here. It'll be Sam Hilliard to lead it off. Came into center field in a double switch last inning. And back to the top for Tapia and Fuentes. Hilliard, big, strong, powerful left handed hitter. Take strike one from Bauer. Cutter has been about 50 50 with his fastball tonight. Sprinkling in the curve and the slider. Takes off on him, one and one. And the Dodgers, from the start, have encouraged Trevor Bauer to be himself. Clayton Kershaw talked about when they signed Bauer that he thinks the clubhouse does a good job of taking different personalities, blending them, getting the best out of it. So he said the, the message to Trevor without even saying it was just do what you do and be yourself, fit right in. Falls behind Hilliard, now comes home with a 2 1 and finds the knees with a fastball, 2 and 2. Trevor's not the kind of guy that loses steam as the game goes on. He can maintain his velocity and his movement. On the hands of Hilliard, short left field. Seeger's out to put it away for the first out of the sixth. Some pitches are meant to have you swing and miss, some to just get a called strike, others to get off the barrel, and that's what he did right there. Rockies going to get their third look at Bauer. You touched on it earlier. Numbers typically don't go down third time through like you see with so many pitchers, at least not last year. Tapia fly to center and struck out. Bauer's first one. Strike one. Very few pitchers in the big leagues last year and in years prior that have a third time through the order an average against a below 200 Trevor Bauer is one of them. And this at bat is personal. This was the stare downs right. Tapia one of the. K victims. Soft roller. Lux is second. Two up and two down in the six. A wide array of ground balls and velocities hit at Gavin Lux. He has been sure handed and sure and accurate throws with all of them. Boy, you think back to the first inning. Deeper this game goes, and the diving play Gavin Lux made to take a hit away from Trevor's story was impressive. Then it feels more and more important the longer this night goes. Josh Fuentes fouls off the first pitch. 72 pitches for Trevor Bauer through five and two thirds. Dodgers leading eight nothing, out hitting the Rockies 12 nothing. One to Fuentes. Ooh. Trying to go to the inside corner, didn't get the call, and it's one and one. Yank down the line. Good foul. And one and two. Talking about that defensive play from Gavin Lux. This is the third out of the first inning. Gavin with a great baseball clock. The ball hit that hard. You dive, you get up. See how quickly he got rid of it because he knew Trevor's story with his speed. He had to get rid of it quick. Bauer to Fuentes with a 1 2. Foul back. Turned it up to 95 of that fastball. And Fuentes did well to get a piece. Look a little extra deep for that. 
velocity has gone up and up as his career has gone on. I think back to his freshman year of high school, he's throwing mid 70s to the low 90s by the time he left to mid 90s now. Strikes him out with a slider. Trevor Bauer is through six in his Dodger debut. Eight nothing the score, 12 nothing in the hit column. New backstage Dodgers presented by Cadillac. Trevor Bauer gives a tour of his momentum training facility. Justin Turner's mic'd up for the team's workout in Arizona. And manager Dave Roberts addresses his team at Camelback Ranch. Don't miss the season premiere of Backstage Dodgers presented by Cadillac tonight, right after the postgame show on Sportsnet LA. Smith, Pollock, and Lux coming up against Ben Bowden. Ball one, eight nothing, seventh inning. This is shaping up to be some kind of night. Smith hits one in the air, deep to left field over Tapia. One hops the wall. He's got extra bases again. Third hit of the night for Will Smith. His second double and a man in scoring position to open the seventh. Dodger lineup giving great support to Trevor Bauer. Offensively, defensively, nice amounts of rest in between innings with these rallies. They are giving the Rocky pitching staff trouble. AJ Pollock to the plate. Looking for his first hit of the day, his first hit of the year. 0 for 3 tonight. And he's got it. A single to center field. He'll hang on at first. First and third as Smith stops at third. If AJ hits righties this year the way he hit lefties last year boy what a year he would have. It's Robert Stevenson. He was one of the best in the National League against lefties last year Pollock was he was the best on the Dodgers. Steve Foster out for a visit with Bowden. Now word from Jack in the box. The triple bonus Jack combo is back for five ninety nine. Like and subscribe people. Double for Smith, single for Pollock, and up comes Gavin Lux. Two for three himself. RBI triple his last time and a single. 15 hits last night, 14 hits tonight. Scoreboard a whole lot different today. After the 8 5 loss, they lead 8 0. 21 total bases, Joe, and still no home run. It's crazy. <laughs> Just line drive hitting machines right now. That first inning was a sign of things to come, wasn't it? Really like batting practice, spraying line drives all over the field. Just kept on doing it. For six hitters, six for six with line drives until AJ Pollock flew out to center to end the inning. Chased a fastball up there. And it looked to be in some pain in the follow through that swing. I think his left knee might have locked up on him a little bit. He's saying no. Cramp. That's what you got to watch for in mile high. You got to stay hydrated. Maybe twisted the ankle a little bit as we saw it the back leg and foot turnover. Took a fastball two and two. Misses full count. 
Dave Roberts top stepping it with Gavin Lux up there after he tweaked something on his left leg. Dodgers are one of the more conservative teams when it comes to a possible injury because they can. They have so much talent and depth. Takes another lap after that swing. One little shake after that swing and one little tender step, but he gets right back in there. Chases the fastball up, down on strikes. T-Mobile is your ticket to the game now through April 5th. Customers can score a free MLB TV subscription at T-Mobile.com slash MLB. As Lux goes down swinging. And Trevor Bauer comes to the plate. No question about hitting for himself here. He's thrown 76 pitches through his six no-hit innings tonight. Stabs through on a bunt attempt, strike one. He's gone deep into games before, but pitch counts in both cases meant that he couldn't continue. Two years ago, one of his first starts of the season, seven no hit innings, but he had walked six. And the pitch count was at 117 through seven innings, so he came out. And the same thing back in 2015. He had walked five, he had thrown 111 pitches through six innings. And got pulled out of a no hit bid then. And 76 pitches tonight. Uncanny, too, looking at his uh, inning by inning pitch count. Hasn't thrown fewer than 12, but he hasn't thrown more than 14. Between 12 and 14. His second successful sacrifice tonight. And this one brings home Will Smith. Mookie's waiting for him to keep on running, but Pollock's going to hang on at second. They lead 9 0. It'll be interesting how they score it right here. It is an attempt at a sacrifice. Once the ball is on the ground, they break. Like a safety squeeze, and with the ball being late and Will Smith sliding the way he did, this could end up being a fielder's choice, RBI. No one advanced as far as the throwing almost error, so you just go with that. It's going to do it for Ben Bowden. Dodgers nine, Rockies nothing, seventh inning. World champion Dodger baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by Jack in the Box. The triple bonus Jack combo is back at Jack in the Box. Try it today for just $5.99. Robert Stevenson, who was Trevor Bauer's teammate in Cincinnati last year, comes in. Dodgers all over the Rockies here trying to get their first win of the year. 9-0. A lot of times when a team comes in and beats up the Rockies the team that comes in after them gets all the equity of the pitching staff is worn out and well, the Dodgers doing this in the first two games even though they could end up one and one. They're going to get some tired arms and some guys they've already seen in games three and four. Walker Bueller takes the ball for the Dodgers tomorrow It'll be John Gray for the Rockies. Here's Betts with runners at first and second and one out taking strike one from Stevenson in his Rocky debut. Okay, a double with a run scored in the second got hit by a pitch in the fourth and came in. Two. 
The official scoring, by the way, in Trevor Bauer's play. Sacrifice with a throwing error and no RBI for Bauer. We'll take a look at that. We'll take a look at Will Smith. He made the choice to kind of pick the ball up deliberately and then deliver it home. And I think Will would have beat the throw. Betts reaches out, gets that slider off of the outside corner, and bangs it into center for another hit. They're going to go station to station. Pollock wasn't sure that it would drop. That's a board for the third time, and the bases are loaded for Seager. How many guys square balls up off the plate at as high a rate as him? And he does a very good job of keeping the upper half, him at his spine angle, right down in there, not pulling off. And so he has a lot of reach even when he commits to balls. At the number one average in baseball last year on pitches outside the strike zone. Seeger three for three with a walk. Swings and misses at the first one from Stevenson. Bauer robbed of the RBI. Robbed of the ribeye steak. But bigger fish to fry right now. Base hit. He's going 90 feet. And that's it. <laughs> Seeger to first. They go to second. One. Back to first. Can't squeeze it. And Seeger wincing. Got tangled up with the ball. I don't know if he stepped on it or it hit him on the top of the foot. Pollock into score. Maybe it's with the feet too. Yeah, it's not the ball. Little awkward tag of the bag. Yeah, that right ankle took some pressure. So Pollock is in to score. Bauer moves to third. They're at the corners for Turner. Three for four tonight. Trevor Bauer has not really been challenged on the defensive side of the ball when he's been pitching. Just the walk and the error by Turner have been the traffic. But boys, been out there on the bases for a while. Might be his biggest challenge of the evening. <laughs> Bundled up for it. Don't see as many of those coats on pitchers running the bases anymore. First of all, pitchers didn't run the bases last year. That's true. That may be why we haven't seen they, them in a couple of years. And then <laughs> Trevor has a tendency to do a few eccentric things, so I'm not sure everybody's going to be wearing the puffy jacket. On one, two, Turner takes strike three. We stretch Endeavor, get back to the main attraction to the bottom of the seventh. No hits against Trevor Bauer through six innings in his Dodger debut. Back in a moment. It's on calendar. Two more games in this four game series in Denver. The Rockies tomorrow and on Sunday. And they continue the road trip to Oakland for three with the A's. They'll be off on Thursday and then home for the Dodger Stadium opening day Friday against the Nationals. It's been all Dodgers in this one. 10 nothing. And two big numbers right now. The zero under the hit column for the Rockies in the 76. It's the number of pitches Trevor Bauer has thrown through six innings. Well, 12 and a half pitches an inning, and he has been very consistent. Somewhere between 12 and 14, you come up with the 76. Quite a debut. Memorable so far, and he wants to finish it off. So that pace that he's on right now would put him in the low 100s. Up. That's where you need to be. He's got nine K's. He's walked one. He's given up two base runners total. Crone was the walk, and then Crone reached on an air. That's it. 
pretty even split so far between the fastball and the cutter and then he adds in the curveball and the slider and those have been mostly the finishing pitches so he gets the hitters used to the velocity or a small break with the cutter and then uses the bigger breaking slider and the slower curveball with the downward break to walk into the strut. <laughs> Just to be exact on the pace he's on, about 112, 114. That'd be the pace that he's been at pitches per inning so far. And his first game in a Dodger uniform. Highest paid pitcher in baseball. First of a three year contract. He's got opt outs after each season. But three years to the deal total. And what a first impression he's making tonight. Part of the order here for the Rockies. Trevor Story yanks the first pitch that he sees in the left base hit. So the no hitter broken up to lead off the seventh on a single from Story. Story was the closest to a hit when he was the third batter of the game with the ground ball up the middle that Gavin Lux made a no hit saving play on. Well, this one a first pitch fastball that he doesn't hit it on the ground, he just hits a line drive to left and gets the no hitter broken up. So now Charlie Blackman, Hideo Nomo is safe. He's the only man to throw a no hitter at Coors Field back in 1996. Trevor Bauer matching Greg Maddox, who threw six no hit innings in his Dodger debut. That was ended because of a rain delay back in August of 2006. Blackman turns on it, hits a fly ball to right, back towards the wall, and gone. So just like that, no hitter gone, shutout gone, and a two-run homer from Blackman. Hit from Story was a first pitch fastball. This is a curveball that lays up on him. The very first one that he has hung the whole game, and Blackman didn't miss it. First home run of the year at Coors Field. Not two games, all these hits on both sides. These runs, really, 25 runs combined. But the first home run. CJ Crawl. Slider for a strike in its own two. First hit for what could be the Rockies' best hitter also of the year. it off stays at a ball and two strikes. We mentioned with Trevor Bauer that the biggest challenge he might have has been on the bases last inning. And it could be a coincidence but it is part of the story that he was out there for a while. Dave Roberts moves from I'm going to really watch his pitch cow watch his Body language out there with the no no going to all right two runs let's get him up the tunnel on something positive let's start to build this pitch count for the season and protect him. Cohen leaves that fastball up count goes full it's looking at maybe a uh, Ross Stripling situation first road trip of the year first series of the year. Although for different reasons, Ross was the kid coming off Tommy John surgery. Power is the hundred million dollar man whose arm you got to protect. Crowen takes ball four, his second walk. 
September 17, 1996 at Deo Nomo. 46 degrees that night, rainy. First pitch was delayed by a couple of hours, and the footing was so bad that midway through he ditched the windup. Started throwing exclusively out of the stretch to combat the bad footing. And as Vin Scully said it, Deo Nomo has done what they said could not be done. And since hasn't. No hitter at Coors Field. David Price. A couple of Dodger debuts coming tonight. And McMahon now lofts a fly ball. Deep right field. That one's gone. Single homer. Walk homer. After six no hit innings from Bauer. As soon as McMahon hits home plate. Mark Pryor will be on a clock of when he'll come out to visit to give David Price as much time as possible. It'll be as long a meeting as possible on the mound to give Price more and more time. Bauer will probably get one more hitter depending on how Price and his body and his arm are feeling. But McMahon just put the bullpen and Price in a little faster mode. Now the Rockies who managed two base runners over the first six innings get four in a row. And they all came in to score against Bauer 10 to 4 now. Still nobody out. Here at Hampson in the pitcher spot takes a run. No visit. Surprise to me. And that could be a meeting that Trevor Bauer has had with Dave Roberts and Mark Pryor about hmm, how he likes visits or not. Like giving him a lot of rope. Over the note, two. Throwing a no hitter late into the game is like pitching in front of a sellout crowd like it's the playoffs your body is reacting differently the adrenaline is at a different level concentration is when the disappointment hits of giving up the hit it's like pitching in front of no crowd it's just the adrenaline can escape your body the ability to concentrate and focus changes and it, it goes from a euphoric I'm in the zone feeling to work. And it doesn't surprise us because we have seen as no hitters are broken up how pitchers and hitters start to change very quickly. And I'll guarantee you it's got something to do with the brain chemistry of adrenaline and positive vibe and good things happening over and over again. And then the shock of disappointment and something negative happening. Changing your whole mindset. Another 2 2 to Hampson. He's down and away. Count goes four. It's actually something Trevor has talked about as being one of the next frontiers in analytics is measuring those kinds of things. We measure everything now. We're finding a way to measure adrenaline and who benefits from it, who struggles when pressure is on and why, and putting numbers on those things. And I don't mean hitting with runners in scoring position or ERA in high leverage spots. I mean literally finding a way to measure your body's responses to high pressure situations and learning from what you find in those measurements. Well as the computer chip gets smaller and smaller and lighter and lighter and devices for measuring can be connected to your body they're going to be able to measure that stuff. Kind of cool kind of scary. Well, I, I, I want baseball to find a way to measure deception. The rhythm of a pitcher's mechanics and how that is deceptive to the pitches he's throwing, how he hides the ball when the ball leaves his glove and the hands separate compared to when the ball's back behind him and how often he shows it. What portion of the ball does he show? Does he show grips? 
Gets him swinging. His 10th strikeout of the night. But we described deceptive deliveries. Let's take a chance at measuring. With that being uh, strikeout number 10, Oral means everybody gets a free Jumbo Jack tomorrow at Jack in the Box. The purchase of a large drink. Just ask for the Dodger deal when you order. Valid only at LA area restaurants. Trevor Bauer in his Dodger debut fires six no hit innings. Gives up a hit and some runs in the seventh, but leads to a standing ovation from Dodger fans that have made the trip to Denver with 10 strikeouts under his belt in his Dodger debut. David Price comes out of the bullpen to replace him and make his own Dodger debut. This is exciting for any veteran when you put on a new uniform, especially for David Price sitting out last year, choosing to sit out and watch the team win the World Series. And now the itch to get back and to be part of this team and to know they got another shot to win another one. So he wants to be an integral part and told Dave Roberts early on that he would play in any role. And even right after Bauer was acquired, or even I think even before he was acquired, when the deal was rumored, Price reached out to Andrew Friedman. And strike one on Don Nunez and said, Hey, if this deal it's rumored happens, I want you to know that I'm open to whatever role you want to put me in. Even before he got together with Dave Roberts in spring training, he already was putting that in motion. Selfless, yeah. He also says he really likes the idea that he can make an impact more than once every fifth day. High fly ball off of the bat of Nunez, sending Betts back the third home run of the inning. And so the first man that David Price faces as a Dodger is Dom Nunez, and he homers. Rockies have put their hitting shoes on here in the seventh. And they're not just picking on bad fastballs, they're picking on hanging breaking balls, first pitch fastballs. And that's a pretty swing. Some of the Colorado air helped this one. 10 5. Five runs have crossed. Sam Hilliard now takes the ball because of that same error that helped that home run. Ten five. The way things are going, it starts to become a little bit uncomfortable. Switch goals from pulling for a no hitter to let's make sure we get the W in the book. Hilliard with a bullet. Deep right field. Another home run. The first two batters homer against Price. Four from the Rockies in the inning. Tomahawk shot here. High fastball. He gets on top of and he doesn't pop it up. He just lines this one. When this hits. The second deck, it's still got some velocity. That's one of those sounds that you don't even need to watch it. You know it's gone. 113 miles per hour off of the bat is Sam Hilliard, and it's 10 6. Arizona did it yesterday, hitting four home runs in one inning. And what wound up being a loss, we mentioned it earlier, that's the first time that's happened on record. Had four home runs in an inning and lost. Dodgers hoping to make it twice in two days. And again, they led 10 0 in a blink of an eye ago. Price home to Rymel Tapia. And he serves a base hit in the center. There are some strange things that happen in Coors Field, and this inning is showing it. And yes, there are some bad pitches, but boy, is it amazing how hitting can get contagious in this ballpark. No action.
action in the Dodger bullpen yet. But I wouldn't be surprised if something starts to stir soon. Josh Fuentes to the plate. Another shot of Dave Roberts here. This place will drive a manager crazy. Jim Leland, one of the greats, drove him right out of Colorado. He said, I can't do it. I can't. I can't live like this. There's now some stirring down in that Dodger bullpen. Corey Knable has started to throw. As Fuentes follows it off, and it's one and one. David Price opted out of last season. He gave a considerable thought. He actually made the trip to L.A. Planning to go through summer camp, intending to play, but had second thoughts, decided it was in the best interest of his young family that he didn't play. He's a three-year-old son, Xavier, one-year-old daughter, Zoe. So he stayed home with them and his wife, Tiffany. Still as involved as he possibly could be from afar. He texted his teammates often, texted him encouragement. Watch the games like a fan. He's the most baseball he's ever watched. Pace in the living room watching the game. Said it's similar to how he paces the dugout normally in games that he's pitching. Here's his one two. Gets him swinging. Third strikeout of Fuentes tonight. And all the way back around to Trevor Story, who started this inning by ending the no-hit bid of Trevor Bauer with a base hit to left. Fastball in the inner half that was slightly up, and he didn't waste any time. Ripping it in the left field. I don't feel like Trevor Story was just making that debut 2016. He's now one of the veteran leaders of this club, free agent at the end of the year. Takes ball one from Price. Story was a first round pick in 2011, but. Would you believe that he was the seventh shortstop taken that year? Lindor, Baez, Joe Panic, eventually moved to second base, and then three guys who never made the majors, all taken before Storm. Off of Turner's glove, that's a fair ball. Up to second goes Tapia. And the Rockies have the tying run in the on deck circle here in the seventh. For 15 plus innings, we didn't have a home run. The Rockies have four now in the last 10 batters. They are hitting the ball really hard this inning. This game is on the line now. This was a blowout with a possible no hitter. This one is literally on the line, and especially with two men on and Blackman up there. He's got to hit the first of the four home runs in this inning. First home run of the year, first hit of the year. So first home run, obviously. Two base runners over the first six innings. Eight here in the seventh. One ball, no strikes. Dodgers just reaching for that finish line, reaching for the tape of the seventh inning. Dodger fielder has not made an out this inning. It's been two strikeouts. And is that one one away? That's a crucial pitch right there. Good pitcher's pitch. Nick the corner and get the count back to even.
Four of the runs charged to Bauer. Two runs to Price on back to back solo homers. Two on, two out, ball number one run that's fouled off in a 22. Up by four, two guys on, going fastball in. My thought after I saw the signal was make sure you get it in, and David Price made a very good pitch on the corner. You go into the inside part of the plate to Charlie Blackman and Coors Field. You don't want to miss out over the plate. You hunt that barrel. Slider away, maybe. Got him swinging. Yeah, that does it for the Rockies in a wacky seventh inning. They hit four home runs and take a 10 0 no hit bid. Make it 10 6 after seven. Dodgers single game tickets for the month of April are on sale now. Visit Dodgers.com slash tickets to purchase them. We can't wait to see you back at Dodger Stadium soon. Carlos Estevez on to pitch. 10 6 the score. Oh. You're looking for some insurance now, Joe. Estevez comes in with a blazing fastball that will hover around 97 the average a slider and a changeup. What a 10 mile an hour differential between this fastball and a slider. Cody Bellinger leads off the inning takes ball one. Life on planet Coors. You're right about that. Two and oh. Bellinger one for four tonight. Drove in around with a single in the fourth. Dodgers have 15 hits again. Big swing fouled off. Two and one. We went to break there and everybody. Booth and in the truck looked around and said, What just happened? Bellinger with a bullet towards the right field corner. It's over Blackman's head and it's off the warning track. Hustling into second, he will keep on going on his way to third. The throw is there, but it's off Story's glove. And Bellinger's got a triple. Earlier in the game Cody showed off his wheels to get a fielder's choice in an RBI this one as that ball rattles around under the padding sticks on the warning track gives him a shot at third base the throw is almost in time but the body and the ball and Story's glove too much impact when it's out over the edge of the web to hold on be really close to Story about that cleanly. Ball one on Muncie. Looked like one of those snow cones as the ball hit Story's leather. Mm -hmm. Half in, half out, and then the impact with Cody. Too much. That ice and syrup all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Two balls, no strikes. Once he finds himself with a runner in scoring position, they have eight hits tonight with runners in scoring position after going three for 16 in these situations on opening day. Two and one. Max is going to be a dad this summer. His wife Kelly is due in July. If you're playing halfway against him on a 2 1 pitch, that's inside in ball three. A 
Estevez trying to have a bounce back season. He took a line drive off his pitching hand last year. Yeah, just was never quite right trying to come back from that injury. And a 7.50 ERA. Fires a 3-1 and misses with ball four. Triple and a walk to greet Estevez, and up comes Will Smith. His first start of the year, Smith three for four with a pair of doubles tonight. A bunch of these guys going through big life events in the same year they you get a World Series ring. Will got married in December. Corey Seager got married. Ball is struck well to center field. But run down by Hillier. Plenty deep to bring home Bellinger. The Dodgers get one back. Smith with his second run driven in tonight. It's 11 6. He's hit it really hard tonight. And that swing is so efficient. Does not look big at all. It almost looks like when he makes contact. The swing almost stops. There is a follow through, but there's just an impact. It's so solid, it looks like there's a hesitation. You made the comparison during the freeway series, and not the comparison. You got to make that caveat. He's not Mike Trout. We're not comparing him to Mike Trout. But right. The swing mechanically looks a little bit like it, and how efficient it is. Yeah, just the, the lack of movement and very efficient movements when there is something, whether it's the hands, the hips, the legs, the planting of the front foot. It's so tight. And that's sacrilege to do anything with Mike Trout's name, but yeah, you brought it up as a yeah. yeah, it just it resembles mm -hmm. Mike Trout's that's a good way to put it. Pollock's the hitter now. He's down 0 1. His first hit of the year last inning and came in to score. Speaking of big life events, how about a happy first birthday to Maddie Pollock? On March 19th. Maddie, who was born prematurely, doing great. Running around, keeping dad on his toes. Some of these big life events shows you that a team that just won the World Series how how young they are. A lot of them are just right in the prime of life. What's the best age? Best age? Are we saying for a baseball player, for a doctor, for a, yeah? I mean, you know, just how about just where your career is? If you were to ask that, just in, you know, in a random bar conversation, so you're not talking, no context given to it. So you had to stay that age, let's say, for the next 20 years. Which age would you yeah. pick? You know, like that, you get sure. stuck in a time warp. Mm -hmm. I'll take 30. That was 88. <laughs> well, no, you're adding context to it. <laughs> no, no, that's a good no, choice. No, but. you get to keep your context. You got to stay in there for a one-two again. Pollock chases here, two out. That'll bring up Gavin Lux, who's making 23 look like a pretty good age. Fantastic defensive play earlier tonight. That was for the final out of the third inning. And he's got a couple of hits. That infield single and a triple. At the end of last year, you 
didn't know which way the needle was pointing with Gavin Lux. I'd say through the spring training and his first couple games, we'd say the needle is definitely pointing up. And a line to center and Hilliard. That'll do it for the Dodgers in the eighth. They get one back and lead it 11 6 to the bottom of the eighth. What a Dodgers debut for Trevor Bauer takes a no hitter into the seventh inning before the Rockies finally got to him Jerry. He was dominant but then course field was course fielding. No Mars favorite place course field. We'll see you right here after the game. <laughs> Access Sportsnet Dodgers presented by your Southern California four dealers as soon as this one finishes. The Dodgers this is one you let's go ahead and get to that finish line. Right? It's just kind of a. Uh, a stretch to get to that finish line. And again, they led 10 0. It's now 11 6. And David Price out there for his second inning of work. CJ Crone, the five hitter to lead it off. You don't want to upset the Dodger fan that hung in there and loved the game. And wow, I've got to watch this. Trevor Bauer is going good. He might throw a no hitter. And then he, you know, he gives up the no hitter and you go, oh, they've got this in hand. I'm going to watch something else. You don't want that fan to all of a sudden have a problem in the morning. Bounced off of the plate. Price with a good play to get Crone. Zero room for air on that. He had to wait what probably felt like an eternity for the ball to come down and then triggered it quickly. Yeah, it goes through your mind to do it faster than you can and throw an accurate throw, but David Price does a nice veteran job of doing it the best he can in normal time, and it's enough. But to rush that and throw it down the right field line, that's the wrong way to do it. One away in the eighth inning, Ryan McMahon comes up. Two run home run last inning. Top of the zone with a fastball, strike one. Victor Gonzalez with the bullpen coach Josh Barr. Give David Price a mulligan on that first inning back. It was the first competitive inning in almost what 17, 18 months. Yeah, it really counted. Go back to the end of 2019. Yeah. When you say your first one back after that wait is going to be at Coors Field. So you know, I just give him a mulligan and say, you know what, this is going to end up being a good signing. He's going to contribute. He's a good teammate. What a pedigree. Five time All Star, former Cy Young Award winner. First overall pick for the draft in 2007. Oh my gosh, there's a cap. Where is Gonsolin? Is he headed out to the bullpen to find Tony? This is unbelievable. <laughs> uh, is it? The, uh, this one. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, I just got to chill. Take a little nap. Oh, chill. my gosh. He's winded. He's looking for an escape route. He's in center field. No belly. You don't want to get scratched or bit. Sprinting into the gap. At the track. At the wall. And captured. <laughs> Boo! Caught <laughs> at the wall. <laughs> Not happy about it either. Remember the old time video of the. There was a gentleman that was chasing on the field, a groundskeeper. He was a skinny guy. He caught the cat, and everybody cheered him. And then the cat bit him, and he, he just started shaking both his arms and dropped the cat. Yeah. The shades of the 1969 Chicago Cubs, the black cat walking past Ron Santo in the on deck circle. Thankfully, that was a beautiful gray cat. And nothing bad ever happened because of a gray cat. McMahon hits one that pierces the shift. A one out hit, his second of the game.
That cat would have got out. The inning prior. Well, Bauer has the no hitter going, and then that inning unleashed. We'd all start believing in superstitions. One on one out for Garrett Hampson. David Price is going to have so many stories from his big league career. Winning a World Series, going to the World Series as a rookie with the Rays. The kids, let me about, tell you about my Dodger debut. There was a cat that came running on the field. For real. Two and up. I have found that these outings are only good for when you're encouraging a little leaguer when they've had a bad day. <laughs> what do you know about having a bad day? You were a big leaguer. You know this, that, the other. Let me tell you about my day at Coors Field. Well, maybe the memory of the cat can help shed the rest of the memory of the day. Three balls, no strikes. The best have a lot of bad days, but the best have figured out a way to survive them and move on and get better. That's a strike three and one. Short by Seeger. Back to first double play. Just what the doctor ordered. 11 6. No runs. One hit. One cat. The top of the park store is now open Tuesday through Saturday at Dodger Stadium. See Instagram at Dodgers top of the park for store hours and details on how you can buy it there or purchase for home delivery. It'll be Walker Bueller tomorrow for the Dodgers making his season debut against John Gray of the Rockies. And this will line Bueller up to start the home opener on Friday. Some high expectations for Walker Bueller early this year compared to other years where he's been slow played. Really got his arm almost ahead of his body as through he went through the offseason workout, so he's looking forward to tomorrow. One of his fellow uh, Vanderbilt Commodore products and a former Dodger farmhand, Jordan Sheffield, on to make his big league debut. He's a Rule 5 pick of the Rockies. Here he is, game two in 2021, reaching the majors. For a while there, the way it was going with the Dodger offense and Trevor Bauer, this could have been kind of a mop up inning, but it's a little more significant now in your debut with the score a little tighter. And I'll tell you what, first big league outing, butterflies, nerves, easy to get loose, easy to throw hard. The hard part. Concentrate on hitting your spots. Matt Beatty will lead this inning off. That officially ends David Price's night as Beatty hits out of the nine spot. Jordan Sheffield one of 14 first round picks from Vanderbilt over the last 17 years. And they might have the first two picks in this year's draft. Kamar Rocker and Jack Leiter. Does that make it 16 and 18 years? And Matt played his college ball just uh, down the road from there at Belmont.
Sheffield 0 1. Sheffield, a native of Tullahoma, Tennessee. Bringing a 1 1 pitch to Beatty. Big old bounce off of the plate. Sheffield sprints over to get it and steps on the bag for the first shot. First big league out for Sheffield, and it's a one unassisted. You can trust your teammates at this level, but that one was necessary. We got nothing but Tennessee going on here, huh? Mickey Betts. Native of Nashville. Great city, by the way. The guy making his debut against former MVP leading to a ball there. Two and up. Well, if Mookie was going to go play college baseball, which he considered right up until the last minute, it was actually going to be at Tennessee. Not Vanderbilt, even though he was a Nashville guy. Got drafted a lot higher than he had planned. He was, he was leaning towards going to Tennessee, and then he got picked in the fifth round. Still took that decision right down to the last minute before deciding to turn pro. Strike three and one. Eleven six game, top of the ninth. Fouls it off, full count. Great parents growing up in Nashville. You know, like you don't turn out the way Mookie Betts has turned out. Not just as he is as a player, but character wise, without great parents. Mom Diana, his dad Willie. Little boy Mookie waiting on a 3 2. Pop fly. Hampson in the game in second will put it away and Betts is out number two. Well it's good Corey Seager is still in the game and coming up to hit here remember we saw him wince after that close play at first base a couple innings ago. Kind of an awkward passing to the bag as he stepped down there. Same time the first baseman Crone did. Nashville connections just keep on coming. You know, Corey got married in Nashville this offseason. We're near there. It's like a tourism department promo going on right now. <laughs> and if it gets to Turner who's on deck, guess where Turner took his RV? To Nashville. Yeah. That's for Seager's wedding, but you can't let the truth come away. <laughs> took a good promo yeah. for you. Yeah. Chamber of Commerce is going to call you. <laughs> Two 
Sheffield home 2-0. Sleeper chases a fastball at 97 with the belt, 2 and 1. Impressive so far from Sheffield. Fastball in to Mookie Betts. We get Seeger out. He'll remember these three names the rest of his life. Beatty, Betts, Seeger. I remember Gary Carter, Al Oliver, and Tim Wallach. Induces a soft bouncing ball. And goes one, two, three through that blitz. To the bottom of the ninth we go. The Dodgers by five, trying to hold on for their first win of the year. Outs away from getting their first win of 2021. It's 11-6 as we go to the bottom of the ninth. And Victor Gonzalez comes on looking for those final three outs. Integral part, surprising part of the Dodger bullpen last year, but boy, was he really good. You see that 1.33 ERA. The only difference between last year and the dominance that he showed with both the fastball and the breaking ball this spring it really his control has abandoned him so far so he's looking for a fresh start here in 2021 not to change the tone from 2020 but to change the tone from spring training you mentioned the low walk rate those two walks out of 103 batters faced. So it's been shocking to see a little bit of lack of control at times during spring. Maybe the stimulus of the real thing will get him back where he was last year. And he broke into the majors and emerged as a huge component of the late inning bullpen in the postseason. Don Nunez, who had a home run his last time up off David Price. Attacks the first pitch, 95 mile per hour fastball that was in the hands. Foul, 0 and 1. Hope everybody's okay. I love Dom's reaction there. Five year old Victor Gonzalez out of Tuxpan, Mexico, overthrows this one. One ball, one strike. New level of confidence and comfort. Dave Roberts said he showed up with spring training this year. Came back in great shape, ready to go. And Dave Roberts even said, Sometimes you wonder about a guy who finally makes it, what he's going to be like for that sophomore season when he shows up. They're very happy, happy with the way Victor came back, at least in the shape he was in. Two and one. In the spring, he was looking for the range on his fastball and breaking ball. Pretty decent spray pattern here so far. Still not dotting anything here in the first three pitches. Close there, ball three. Will Smith kind of setting up middle middle with his body and then the glove on just halves of the plate, not creeping out to the corners. Probably some residue from watching him throw in spring training, knowing that. The spray pattern is not tight yet. Nunez helps him out on a 3-1. There was a foot inside. And he's out number one of the ninth. Even farther in than the first pitch that was a ball that Nunez swung at and helped Gonzalez out. This one way in there. Dodgers 11, Rockies 6, bottom of the ninth inning with one gone. And Sam Hilliard, who had a home run his last time, stands in. Hilliard now has 14 home runs in the big leagues. 
six against the Dodgers. He's hit six home runs in 11 games against LA. He's 27 years old now. This is his third year with time in the majors. And an 0 1 from Gonzalez. There it is, strike two, perfectly placed. For the Dodgers, John Gray for the Rockies. He begins the final year of his contract. Dodgers trying to hold on to this one and look at a chance to take a lead in the series tomorrow evening. Gonzalez home one two. Strikes him on. Two up and two down for Victor. ball and an excellent one knee high the whole way and then when it arrives at the plate just sinks a little bit with the twist and curve to get it away from the barrel. You can't say this was a tale of two games for the Rockies. I was just saying the same thing. It was it was six innings 20 batters yeah. seventh inning 11 batters to the plate. Yeah. And now we're looking at a possible one two three inning here in the ninth. It was like a game within a game. It was like a sixth inning lives by itself. Real loner. There's Tapia. Swing into the first pitch. Ground ball to first. Muncie to the bag. And the Dodgers are in the win column in 2021. 11 6 over the Rockies here in game two. Opening day was anticipated for a long time. Game two just anticipated overnight, but the Dodgers got their first win of the year. Trevor Bauer is a winner in his Dodger debut taking a no hitter into the seventh inning. Ten strikeouts tonight. And he got a lot of support from who's been the top offense in baseball the last couple of years. Eleven runs on 16 hits for the Dodgers. 11 six the final score for all Hershiser Kirsten Watson and the rest of our crew Joe Davis saying so long from Denver. Stay tuned for Access Sportsnet Dodgers and we'll talk to you tomorrow night.